Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about the reserve list buyouts and how, in my opinion, it doesn't make any sense. So a lot of you want to know, hey, should I buy reserve list cards? You can buy them, but good luck trying to sell them. Uh, the buying market for this is very small uh, in terms of something like North Star, which is until yesterday bulk. Uh, the definition of bulk is now, because it is a rare from Legends on the reserve list, $60. Uh, it will go down, but the price now will be probably around $10, maybe $15, because it has hit $60. So it's not going to fall all the way down to the dollar or two that it used to be. Now, this might encourage other people to go on buying sprees and that will probably be what happens. If you have an older collection, don't touch it, do not sell it, do not trade it, just keep it, hold on to it, because that is the only thing that can go up in value. This, dyna this dynamic is a strict result of the modern cards being printed. Every single year, and sometimes twice a year, we have a master set. We get commanders, we get dual decks, we have I don't know, do we still get event decks? We used to get event decks. Inquisition of Kozak is a very good example. It used to be fifteen to twenty dollars. It was printed in a reprinted in an event deck, reprinted one of the conspiracies, and then reprinted in a master set. Tamagoyf is a very key example here because there was a point where Tamagoyf was reprinted in Modern Masters original and its price went up. His price actually literally went up. Because what goes well with one Tamagoyf? A play set of Tamagoyfs. And when you look at the history of that card, it took multiple reprints and the it took the danger that it's going to be in every single modern master set from here on out as a mythic to really reduce its price. And Wizards of the Coast has done a good job. I've always felt it was very funny that they're sitting on all this money, like lilies and snaps and all these things that they know people want, and they can control the secondary market. Now, caveat, reserve list. The reserve list is dumb. I always felt it's kind of stupid to prevent people from playing your game. And I can summarize it as this. Most of the cards on the reserve list are very bad cards. Probably... 5% of the cards are Moxes, Lotuses, Dual Lands, very essential cards. But the other 95, or the ma the massive amount of them, are really crappy cards. And they're so bad and not playable that it doesn't make sense for them to put it on. I know people argue that, hey, they made, you, they made a promise 20 years ago. Look at what they put on this list like just look at it and even and the cards are spiking it that's a horrible part about it is these cards are no good but they keep going up in price now abyss is good i'm not going to say abyss is bad but is it 415 dollars good no could we just reprint a very similar card yes why are we not doing this who knows so you know, you really look at what is on the reserve list. Like I urge you to go online, stop the video, type in MTG reserve list, and take a look at the cards. Most of them like are narwhals. Most of them are cards that apocalypse chime. Most of them are cards that have never seen the light of play, and they just put them all on the reserve list. It wasn't like someone carefully came up with a plan. It was more of a desperation, panicky move. If they had to think about it for more than like the two seconds they might have put the list together, I know they didn't think about it because Norway, a two, double blue, two, two first striker with I think protection from red is on the reserve list. Norway. That didn't even see play in Homelands. <laughs> Homelands was the worst set ever. Well, I mean, okay, Fallen Empire is pretty bad, but I, I would put them one and two. Not in that particular order, but some order. And you look at this, you have Cabo Go. I'm pretty sure this is on a reserve list. It costs one black. 
Oh, ghoul. Mm. At the end of each turn, put a plus one plus one counter on it for each other creature that died during this turn and was not regenerated. Okay, do you know what we can get for one black right now? We can get Death Shadow. Oh, you know, it would take forever. You would have to have like so many creatures die. Let's assume Death Shadow is a 6-6, six, six, which is very reasonable. You, five creatures would have to die before this became a 6-6, six, six, right? And Death Shadow would keep getting stronger as you get hit. And this card, I mean, you just have to continuously kill stuff, which is very difficult to do. But you know what? And if you had multiples in your hand, they wouldn't be affected, right? If you have multiple Death Shadows, it's your life that matters, not how many creatures previously died or who's going to die now. Pyramid. Just take a look at this card. How is this card $23? If this card was not on the reserve list, it would be five cents. It would literally be reprinted in a maquette and it would be five cents. So a lot of uh, things I want to say about the reserve list, I'm not going to repeat. Um, my point of this is, this is very silly. It is extremely silly. I can understand if you're going to buy a moat. I can understand if you want to buy some power nine. I can understand some of the better cards. What I don't get is why are these crappy cards going up? And why we cannot reprint the crap? Fine, if you want to protect the collectors, go for it. But print narwhals, please. There's no danger of printing a 2-2 first strike with protection from red that costs two and double blue. There's no danger at all. I mean, there's not going to be meta breaking, right? Collectors are not going to be super mad. So this is my argument against the reserve list was it was constructed very poorly because I know you just look at if you don't, you need to take a look at what cards are actually on that list. Urtai, which take a look at Urtai. He's two in the blue. He counts as a wizard. This was before that when you were just a legend, you were, had to only be a legend. Uh, two and two blue, counter target spell, play this ability as an interrupt. We have cards today that are better than this. But this is on the reserve list, and it's $9 and trending up because it is a reserve list wizard. Just like that dragon. It was a reserve list. Well, actually, it's not a dragon. It's like a Viscar or something, but it summons dragons. So... Being on the reserve list doesn't mean that you are highly collectible. It's not really meant that, oh, these cards are so powerful, we can never reprint them again. It's just, they came up with a random list of cards, in my opinion, and they desperately put every card they could on the list. There's some things that are just terrible, like, and they're all on a reserve list, and they're all spiking now. And they just don't make any sense to me. Like... I, Ugh. I get some cards are going to be more pricey than other cards, but then at the same time, is Island of Whack Whack really worth $110 in Rising? It's tapped to reduce target flying creature power to zero. This would be a fantastic EDH card, just like Maze of If. But for $110, just make something similar. I could see something that comes in play tapped, produces one generic mana, and does the same effect for flying creatures. And it would be so popular in EDH. People would definitely go bonkers for it. It would sell product. So this whole reserve list stuff doesn't really make any sense to me because now I'm, I'm looking at the list now. It's not 95%. It's like 99% of these cards. I didn't realize how many cards were on this. So I'm going to say anywhere between 95, 99, no, okay, 95 to 98% of the cards on the reserve list are really, really bad. But that does not prevent them from going up in price. Anyway, that is it. Bye, guys.